Okay, we are live. You can see my screen, obviously, right? Yeah, I can okay. see your screen. I can see your camera. It's perfect. Hadim, does my camera show on the screen over here? Does my photo show like when I'm sharing my screen? To me, yes, it does show. Okay, so I'll minimize this right here, okay. Hello everyone, uh, we are just waiting for more people to join in. We right now have seven people. Hadim, can you give me an update on how many participants we have? We have seven participants. Okay. So I can wait Should maybe we two wait more. For more. Yeah, we can okay, wait maybe sure. one or two minutes and then we can get started for sure. Okay, perfect. So sorry, everyone, to keep you waiting. We're just waiting for a few more participants and we'll get started in one or two minutes.
Okay, I think we can get started, Patty. So I don't, I want to be respectful of everyone's time as well. So yeah, yeah. it's sure, 6.06, sure. Six, we can get started. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I hope we'll get some more participants as we move along. Um, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dima Halabi, and I'm a senior nutrition instructor at the College of Health Sciences at Abu Dhabi University. And what I want to talk to you today about is introducing you to the bachelor's degree of science in human nutrition and dietetics housed within our college. So what I'll be discussing today is giving you an idea about this program, um, who are the team members that make up this program, the structure of the program and uh, the curriculum, talking a little bit about the courses, who are, who are the practicum affiliated sites uh, where we send our students to for their internships, um, our accreditation status, so you can get a little bit of an idea about the quality of the program. I also wanna talk to you about our new lab facilities, uh, we uh, also want to also want to discuss a little bit about after graduation. What are sort of the kind of things that you would be looking out for if you're graduating with a degree in nutrition and dietetics, such as the licensure? What are the different career opportunities? And uh, perhaps if you would be interested in pursuing an advanced degree, uh, what are the options there? And telling you a little bit about the job outlook and future trends. So I want to start out with a, a mini poll, two questions, uh, just to get started on how uh, giving an idea about nutrition, want to see how much you know about nutrition before I delve into the topic. So I'm switching here to um, a platform called AHA Slides where I can run this poll. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, just give me a minute so that I can share with you the polls. Okay. So I hope you can see my slides right now. Um, what I wanna ask you is uh, to go to ahaslides.com. This is a platform where you can answer my questions over here. And what you would need to do, you can use either the same tablet or on your mobiles if you're watching this on your uh, laptop. And uh, you can enter the code at the very top, which is going to be um, 54 capital D 53. So if you go to ahaslides.com, you'll have the participant code at the top there where you would enter this code in order to participate in this poll. Um, if you have any questions, I'll definitely leave a question and answer session at the very end where I can answer all the questions that you have. And please feel free to write down anything on your, on the chat box. So, uh, good afternoon, Ziad. And I'm just checking the chat box right now. Hussein, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so please, uh, join me in answering this poll. My question to you is, uh, what words come to mind when you hear the word nutrition? Okay, so what do you think of? What do you, um, what reminds you of this uh, domain or, or profession? Proteins, energetic. Thank you for participating, everyone. Food, food pyramid, health, absolutely. Healthy lifestyle, I'm getting also some answers in the chat as well. Feeding, yes. Lifestyle health, healthy meals. So definitely these are all things that we study as nutritionists. Um, in our degrees, we study about you know leading healthy lifestyles or counseling people on leading healthy lifestyles, on eating healthy foods. Um, the food pyramid, a healthy eating guide, who, which is now being replaced by and an more up-to-date my plate, exercise, ingredients, diet, absolutely. 
Okay, great. Thank you for participating. And I'm going to ask you one question after this. Now, I may have a very a varied audience over here, and I'm not sure if people are would like to learn more about this program or maybe they're just interested in learning more about nutrition in general. But my next question is, how would you rate your interest in a career in nutrition? Are you very interested? Are you interested but would like to learn more? Or you're still unsure about whether you're thinking about going into such a profession? And I'll be sure to check my chat box as much as possible. So thank you for those as well that are participating. I got an interested in the chat box as well. Okay. Okay, so this gives me a little bit of an idea that some of them are some of you are interested, but you want to learn more. And others are still unsure about whether they'd like to go into a profession in nutrition. Well, I hope that after my talk, you're going to know more about this uh, degree and whether you would be interested in enrolling in such a degree, uh, uh, hopefully at, uh, at our university. So, so I got a little bit of everything, a little bit of very interested, interested, and some people are still unsure. Okay, great. Well, thank you for participating, everyone. Um, Let's head back to my PowerPoint presentation so you can actually learn something today. Okay, so I'm just gonna be going back to where we started. Okay. So thank you for everyone who answered. So I just wanted to start with this slide is usually when we think about um, diet, dietitians or nutritionists, these are what our friends think we do, usually what society thinks we do because we see dietitians all the time on the media, what our patients think we do, <laughs> especially if we're trying to get them to change their behavior and their lifestyle, what doctors think we do, what we think we do, and what we actually do. As, as my students would learn, there's a lot of numbers uh, that comes with being a nutrition. So what is human nutrition and dietetics? Well, first of all, to define it, it's the application of science, of the science of nutrition to the prevention and treatment of disease and the promotion of health, both at the individual level as well as in the community. So we promote good health by, uh, by corrective eating habits and therefore improving our quality of life, being able to live longer to fight disease, and so some of the things that uh, dietitians do is they counsel patients on food and nutrition, and they explain nutrition issues to patients. Uh, we assess patient dietary and health needs. We also develop diets or meal plans for patients based on their conditions and their diet histories. We then evaluate, monitor and evaluate the results, how they're doing, and then we modify accordingly uh, based on that. We also promote nutrition through public speaking and community outreach programs because we want to advocate for our profession and we want to be able to advance our profession. And we need to stay up to date on the research because um, this is a profession that involves lifelong learning. So just to tell you a little bit about my colleagues, my wonderful colleagues uh, at the college, um, at the very top, of course, is our um, Dean, uh, Dr. Wasim Al-Mawi, who's worked very hard to um, put our programs, uh, put together our programs and to build our programs and our labs and our facilities and support us through the growing our College of Health Sciences. We're the newest college at the university and we came out with a lot of new pro uh, programs. One of them is the nutrition one. Uh, I also have my colleague who's an expert in the food sciences, uh, Dr. Suimal. Uh, we have Dr. Tina, Mrs. Tina, who's also uh, an expert in the industry and in media, uh, managing her own wellness company, and myself, who is a senior nutrition instructor as well. So uh, a shout out to my wonderful colleagues. Uh, the mission of our program is to prepare future leaders in the nutrition and dietetics profession by providing them with the breadth and depth 
of knowledge and skills in nutrition and strong, strong experiential activities, learning activities, which for those who are not familiar with that word, it's all the practical hands-on learning that we give our students to encompass uh, research and critical thinking, uh, communication and professional practice as well. So this fits in with the overall uh, mission of the College of, of, our, of the Health Sciences, as well as the mission and vision of the university. So the mission of our college is going to be also to uh, produce graduates who are equipped with the theoretical and the practical knowledge to be able to analyze and, if, and communicate with patients, with their interprofessional colleagues and uh, prof uh, professionals, and uh, excel in a career in the healthcare industry in order to lead uh, in the field of, uh, of healthcare um, and in line with the UAE's ambitions to become a world-class healthcare provider uh, and um, a medical research hub in the region. Uh, uh, mostly in the region and of course uh, to the to the outside world as well. So definitely it fits in with our mission and vision. Now regarding the program itself, it's a combination of educational coursework, which is the theoretical component, and the hands-on practical uh, experience. So in the educational uh, component, we uh, administer courses that go from basic to more advanced as we progress through the curriculum. And it's based on the knowledge, skills, and competencies of the US accrediting body, ASEND, the Accreditation Council for Education in Nutrition and Dietetics. Regarding the supervised practice, it, we complete, students complete a minimum of 1,200 hours of supervised practice, which is around, comes out to around nine months of training. And students will rotate in the medical nutrition therapy, the food service management, and the community nutrition um, rotations. So they get a little bit of all the interdisciplines of nutrition. And uh, the duration of our undergraduate degree is four years, very similar to all the other programs in our college, such as the public health, the environmental health sciences, and the uh, molecular and medical genetics. And it's a total of 130 credits. So the, the um, human nutrition and dietetics curriculum will encompass a wide range of courses. And you can see here, we do include the food science courses, the community nutrition and public health courses. Uh, we have also physiology and anatomy, and we have the, um, the chemistry and the biology courses. We have the management aspect because we are involved a lot in managing programs and managing food administration if we're working in the food service realm. And uh, we also learn about research because it's a very important aspect to stay up to date um, in, the in, the, in the field of science. So uh, we also, uh, students also do a research project as well. The dietetics component is what deals with, you know, nutrition and the relationship with disease, and this usually happens in the clinical setting. So some of the learning methodologies that are common to also other courses are uh, enrolling and having lab experiences, having field trips. Um, of course, some of this was a little bit limited during the COVID pandemic, but in general, this is uh, what we would like to give. We have been engaging our students as much as possible in the online experiences, even with some of the ones listed here. So we have also work shadowing um, where uh, students get to test drive their career, case studies uh, showing uh, cases in the field, role playing in order to enhance our counseling skills, simulation, um, as we're seeing here in the picture, we also have projects and presentations within the courses, and of course the practicum activities that take place at the hospital and other affiliated um, settings. So just to give a little tiny idea about how the curriculum is set up without going too much into detail, the first year or the freshman year is going to be uh, doing mostly focusing on the general education requirements and some basic chemistry and biology courses. Uh, we do introduce the basic human nutrition course at the very at, in this year, but then uh, this is just an intro, intro course to nutrition. In the second year, which is the sophomore year, we then start to take some more uh, basic and intermediate level nutrition courses. So things like assessment of nutritional status, management of food services, menu planning, 
uh, nutrition and metabolism and nutrition through the life cycle. We also uh, uh, have in the winter session, the work shadowing course, which is going to be an early exposure to the career of nutrition uh, within this course, which, which happens twice um, in that year. Um, so people, students will rotate within different areas of nutrition or interdisciplines. We can see we take around six courses each semester. The final third year has the heavier advanced nutrition courses, which comprise of a variety of the microbiology and food processing courses, as well as the medical nutrition therapy course and the public health nutrition course. Uh, now we do start the practicum or the internship during this year, the third year. So we start with the more basic rotations and then we progress slowly to the more advanced rotations. So this is how the third year looks like. We also have a very fun, interesting uh, course in the third year, which is the culinary course. And my students learn how to cook and we learn how to substitute ingredients for healthier ingredients in our cooking. We also learn how to cook large for large um, quantities, uh, large quantities of food for large establishments, such as you see in hotels or in hospitals, where we, you won't be feeding just two or three like you would do at home, but you would be feeding groups of, you know, 100 and 200 uh, patients. So we uh, then progress to our third, fourth and final year, which is completely uh, done at the hospitals. It's the practicum year. And uh, this is the final year of nutrition and dietetics before graduation. So how about our practicum affiliated sites? We have uh, now contracts with the following sites, uh, MediClinic Newer Hospital, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, as well as Bourgiel Hospital within the VPS healthcare system. So our students will get the opportunity to conduct their internships there uh, because we have uh, affiliations with these sites. And there's also the community nutrition rotations where they will conduct some rotations in their in community health centers or with the Department of Health or uh, with NGOs. And uh, finally, the uh, practicum manual will provide really the structure of this, in, this um, rigorous internship that's being done in order to be able to gain all the competencies needed uh, to apply the theoretical knowledge that they learned in their earlier three years. So I'm sure you must be wondering something very important, which are our accreditations of our program. So first and foremost, we have the UAE Ministry of Education Commission for Academic Accreditation Approval. So we've been accredited by the CAA. We also uh, have modeled our program against the U.S. Uh, crediting bodies qual uh, education. We are go seeking this accreditation, um, hopefully as our students, as we get our first graduating class. And uh, the mission is here to, of course, um, ensure the quality of the education and, and to advance the profession of dietetics. So um, finally, we also, uh, uh, you can also gain a professional licensure. You're eligible to get the licensure through the Department of Health of Abu Dhabi by meeting the professional qualification um, requirements. Now, um, the PQR, these are standardized licensing documents that were developed by the UAE authorities to um, the Ministry of Health, basically, um, in both Dubai and uh, Abu Dhabi. And they set out the necessary requirements for licensure for health professionals that are opting to practice in the UAE in accordance with the federal laws and best practices and standards. So once uh, students complete the degree of nutrition and dietetics, they then become eligible to sit for the national exam. So whether that would be in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, you would uh, be eligible for that. And um, I want to also highlight uh, some of the key uh, uh, aspect or strengths of our college, which would then um, help you to decide whether you would like to enroll at Abu Dhabi University. And so our college really has now is, has been equipped with the latest uh, technologies in our labs and our facilities. 
We also have a multicultural learning environment. Uh, we focus a lot on critical thinking in our classes and problem solving. We prepare our students for positions in a variety of healthcare professions. Uh, you get to be, have the chance of becoming, to, uh, becoming part of an intellectually challenging sector. Uh, we also have a high employment rate in the healthcare field, especially now, as you can see moving forward past the pandemic, we can um, enjoy really good employment opportunities in our professions as we realize how important health is in our community. And uh, multiple clinical affiliations uh, that offer a variety of opportunities. We also have experienced um, health sciences faculty that will guide you in every step of your learning process or learning journey. Um, so I wanna show you a little bit about our teaching lab and facilities and uh, teaching equipment. And this is a peek inside our brand new nutrition lab. Um, you can see at the right is the InBody 770, the latest InBody machine for assessing nutritional uh, body comp so assessing body composition. You can also see the various stations uh, here uh, for, so this lab will serve as both teaching and research purposes, uh, educational purposes, and uh, the different stations serve here for uh, our students conducting various assessment uh, activities. We did have, again, the limitation during the pandemic of using the lab. We will hopefully be using the lab this semester um, a little bit later on for my students. Now, um, this is a snapshot of the stadiometers here on the left. Um, also, the in-body, several different ones, each for a different purpose. And I have my, uh, my bench over here at the right, which is the simulated food models and some of the different educational tools. Uh, at the left here, we have our daily portion guides and uh, um, muscle and fat uh, replicas. We have our food cards, our tubes, test tubes that resemble how much fat and sugar are in different foods. And our 3D MyPlate uh, model, which shows us a little bit about, which shows also the food models uh, as well. Um, this is an individual station for student where you would have, they would have their assessment tools, you would have some fitness tools as well, the skin fold caliper, um, the waist circumference, uh, the hand grip, uh, etc. And we also have the, uh, the bench at this right here, which also has some medical tools, um, such as the glucometer and the blood pressure mach machine, as well as some food scales. Our heavy duty, uh, quite expensive uh, nutrition research equipment consists of our bone calorimeter, which is going to measure nutrient composition in foods. Our anthropometric measurements uh, will consist of the um, body composition analysis, our portable stadiometer, our skin fold calipers and measuring girth, so things like waist circumference, arm, arm circumference, uh, et cetera. Our nutritional educational tools will consist of the simulated food models, which include all nationalities. So the international, the Middle East and the Gulf food models, the my plate kit, as well as food scales, which determine not only weight, but also nutrient composition of foods. We also have our measuring cups and spoons. This helps us a lot in teaching uh, patients, future you know, counseling patients on what are the appropriate portion sizes for health. Our body fat and muscle replicas, our um, uh, tubes for test tube display for how much sugar and how much fat are in certain foods and some of the other um, disease models like the cardiovascular and diabetes. We have um, also food cards and the basic fat kits, some kitchen scales, as well as some um, posters that tell us a little bit more about calories and nutrients within foods, as well as labeling. And we have the medical and healthcare tools, which are like the um, blood pressure monitor, the basic glucose meter. We have the combination lipid, glucose, and hemoglobin. And we have the simulation that we're also 
looking into for dietetics education. Finally, for the fitness tools, we're going to have the hand grip exerciser, the multi-purpose strength rope, a wrist exerciser, and role playing. So um, these are all the different tools that we're involved in, uh, that we use in our profession, and that I teach, that I'd like to teach all the rest of my students to. We also have nutritional softwares that we've um, purchased that are needed for our profession. So for example, um, nutrition and analysis softwares, we have the ISHA software, which gives us a breakdown of all the nutrients in meal plans and in diets. We have also the evidence analysis library, which is a, 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 a compilation or synthesis of the most relevant nutritional research on important um, dietetic uh, practice questions that are all housed within an accessible online uh, user-friendly website. The Electronic Nutrition Care Process Terminology is also a publication which, which contains the full collection of the standardized terminology in our profession, which allows for optimal nutrition care uh, to patients. And these are just some of the areas of nutrition where we would practice. So clinical nutrition, uh, where we would have individual counseling to our patients through assessing their, uh, through um, conducting nutritional assessments, through teaching them, educating them on portions. We also have the food service, uh, the food service uh, rotations that students go through that, uh, for example, where they're involved in producing uh, in, in uh, ensuring food safety and um, assisting in the administration of the food service operations and uh, providing their expertise in, in verifying diets that need to be sent uh, within hospital settings, et cetera. And we finally, we have the community nutrition uh, rotations uh, where we uh, conduct specific nutrition uh, community nutrition activities or interventions in the community, such as school projects, such as supermarket tours, and such as health fairs. So basically, the requirements that you would need in order to graduate with, to become a nutrition expert in the field is conducting a minimum of a bachelor's degree in the field of nutrition and dietetics. So I will tell you a little bit about the dietetics component and what makes it different than just being a nutritionist on your own. Uh, from a CAA accredited institution, um, which is like ours, we complete a supervised practice program at a hospital um, for around nine months, and then sitting for the national exam that's administered by the Department of Health, or it could be the Dubai Health Authority, the DHA in Dubai. And uh, also making sure we complete continuing professional education requirements to stay up to date in the field. So. These are to maintain our licensure in the field. So just to explain a little bit, what would be the difference between dietitians and nutritionists? And I'm sorry if I'm not uh, checking the chats right here, but I can, uh, if there's any questions, I'll be checking that in a minute. Um, so right now I see that we still don't have any um, questions. Okay, so regarding the differences between dietitians and nutritionists, Dietitians are usually the credentialed, licensed food and nutrition experts that go through a more extensive and formal training, um, and they can apply their expertise in a wide range of settings. So hospitals is the typical one that we think of, but then there's also other areas of practice. And we, the wonderful thing about nutrition is that it has such a wide scope of practice that you would see nutrition dietitians really in so many different um, professional settings. And we're going to go through that in just a minute. And some will specialize in more specific populations, such as children or maternity. And um, nutritionists versus nutritionists, these would encompass individuals with that have a broad range of credentials, uh, more broad and training in nutrition. Their educational background will be very similar to dietitians, but it's much less protected under the law. And they have much more limited opportunities, job opportunities, because all dietitians are both dietitians and nutritionists, but not, but not all nutritionists are dietitians, if that makes sense to you. So um, basically, just to, what you want to remember is that many jobs are only available to licensed dietitians. And that's why our four-year program covers both. 
So, sorry, just moving on to my next slide. Okay, perfect. So regarding professional licensure in the UAE, um, uh, this happens through uh, the Department of Health in Abu Dhabi by meeting the PQR, as I mentioned, which is a standardized uh, licensing document developed by the UAE authorities um, for the necessary requirements. And so for clinical dietitians, usually uh, you would have the minimum of the bachelor's degree in dietetics, as well as a two years uh, uh, work experience after that. And internationally, in case that you leave the UAE, the requirements are usually set by the country-specific Ministry of Health in order to get your licensure in dietetics. Now, what are some of the career prospects or potential uh, job positions that you would find for uh, graduates of nutrition? You would find them at hospitals or healthcare facilities, in sports and wellness programs, in food-related industries, in private practice, in community and public health settings, working at universities and medical centers and working within research as well. I'm gonna delve a little bit more into detail of each one so that you can get an idea. These are the type of positions that you would hold within these different settings. So you could be a clinical dietitian, a specialized dietitian, a sports dietitian, a med rep or a medical representative, a product representative, food safety dietitian or quality control specialist, you could potentially open up your own private practice. You could also go into the culinary arts and sciences. You could become a health educator or nutrition educator. You could also work within research to, to advance research. So to speak a little bit more about these type of facilities, I'll go through them a little bit more into detail. Um, so at hospitals or other healthcare facilities, uh, these would include hospitals, long-term care, community health centers, medical offices, and our typical role here would be educating patients about nutrition by administering medical nutrition therapy as part of the interdisciplinary healthcare team, such as the physicians, the pharmacists, the physiotherapists, the, um, the OTs. So these are going to be um, our, medical, our care, uh, medical care plan team. So the job titles that they may, that dietitians may carry is a clinical dietitian, perhaps after many years of experience being head of the dietary department, medical nutrition product representative. So they would, um, they would uh, inform uh, other dietitians on nutrition products such as supplements and enteral and parenteral products and uh, also healthcare educators, uh, food service dietitian that may work within the kitchen or even at the managerial level. The one you're probably most familiar with is the clinical dietitian, but there, all these other ones are also available for uh, dietitians. In food and nutrition related businesses, we typically work in food service operations such as schools, daycare centers, correctional facilities, in restaurants or culinary schools and in food companies as well. You can have dietitians that also, um, also oversee some of the uh, nutritional aspects of products. So here their role would be to administer food service operations from purchasing all the way to production and servicing, managing employees, ensuring food safety standards, um, and quality control. So we do learn a lot about food safety. We also develop menus and we conduct nutrition analysis. We might wanna know how many calories you're giving to your patients in a hospital and what is the nutrient composition for different diets, such as gluten-free diets or high protein diets or GI diets and uh, programs to meet health requirements as well. What are some of the job titles that we can carry? We can be um, culinary nutritionists, quality control or quality assurance specialists. We can work within sales, within companies, be food inspectors or food safety specialists. We can also be in the manufacturing aspect and we can be food critics or food writers. So I remember um, a friend of mine, she worked as a mystery uh, chopper um, and she was a dietitian that would visit restaurants and make sure they're complying to all the um, food safety standards. Community and public health settings include uh, 
NGOs and UN agencies, the Ministry of Health and other governmental agencies, maybe other public health agencies and outpatient clinics. And our role here is to teach, monitor and advise the public by helping them improve their quality of life through healthy eating habits. So some titles that we would carry are the public health dietitian, advisor, health care consultant or educator, community nutritionist, or a nutrition survey specialist for surveillance purposes as well. So for example, um, uh, carrying out surveys on uh, specific health uh, uh, statistics in order to know how much is our, uh, how much are some of the health indicators in our population. So also sports nutrition and corporate wellness programs, we would work in gyms or community wellness centers and educate clients on the connection of food, fitness, and health. And usually the title we would carry is food, a sports nutritionist or sports dietitian. We also may work in educational institutions like myself, where we would work in schools or universities teaching dietetic students, as well as medical students, physician, nurses, nurses, and other others on the science of nutrition uh, and food. So we're seeing, for example, uh, medical students learning more about nutrition because there's some studies showing that they have a lack of nutrition knowledge, which is very important for prevention. And uh, we can hold uh, titles such as instructors, professors, or school nutritionists. In research, we may work in universities or hospitals, in food and pharmaceutical companies, and we would usually conduct experiments to answer critical nutrition questions. For example, what is the relationship between vitamin D and osteoporosis? and find alternative foods or nutrition recommendations for the public. Here, we would carry titles such as research assistant coordinator or nutrition data consultants. We can also be open our own private practice and work as a consultant, for example. Uh, Ms. Tina uh, from our team is, uh, does that as well. She has her clinic and we can work in polyclinics where we'll have several, for example, uh, we're very much involved in diabetic and uh, certain uh, disorders uh, that involve, you know, obesity. So we can work in polyclinics where we work hand in hand with the endocrinologist and uh, other professionals uh, for that. So we plan nutrition intervention and counsel patients on optimal nutrition for a variety of diseases. And we provide services to healthcare or food companies. And I want to uh, show you a nice video on how important our profession is uh, before I move on to my final slides on some of the advanced degrees and the job outlook. So I'll just show you, uh, it's about three or four minutes, a nice video on our profession. Just give me a minute and I will show you this video. And I'll definitely leave a little bit of few minutes at the end if you would like, if you have any questions for me as well, I'm willing to answer any questions that you have as well. Okay, so I'm sh sharing it right now. It's such an exciting time to work in food and nutrition. Everywhere you look, there is a growing interest in the connection between food and health. And with this expanding awareness comes the need for more people like you to choose a career in dietetics. The field is always growing and evolving and there are so many different career paths you can take at this point in time. It used to be kind of cut and dry, but now if you can dream it, you can do it. The science of food is so interesting to me because everybody eats food, so it's relevant to everyone and you can really make a difference in people's lives. There are so many reasons to pursue this unique and valuable career path. In thinking about what I wanted to do as a career, I always just thought I'd go into medicine, go to medical school. But the more I thought about it, I realized what I really wanted to do was to help people prevent illness. And to me, nutrition and dietetics is the perfect fit for that. I went into nutrition because I absolutely love food and I think it's very important for people to understand how the food that they're eating affects their health and their bodies and that's what everyone is interested in. There are so many reasons why I went into nutrition. I think the main reasons were influenced by my diagnosis of thyroid cancer and this influenced me to want to take something that I've always been passionate about which is food and create healthy options for people. 
dietetics is a great way to kind of merge a love for medical knowledge and health with a love of food. From schools and supermarkets to restaurants and athletic fields, the professional opportunities are endless. When I went into dietetics, when I first started out, I thought the only thing I can do in dietetics is work as a dietitian, registered dietitian in a hospital, and that's it. But now that I'm here, and now that dietetics is such a growing field and more and more people are interested, you can work in schools, you can work in outpatient, you can go to patients' homes. I think it's really important to know that with a major in dietetics, you can work in almost any type of setting you want. Why I love working with children is because you can make them as passionate about food as you are. Just a simple message will impact a child's daily life all the way up until they're an adult. Sport Nutrition combines the best of all possible worlds. It's our culinary expertise, it's our clinical expertise, and you get to work with active people, telling them what to eat, when they eat it, and how much. That is a home run. As a supermarket dietitian for Meyer stores, I help consumers sort through the confusion because all those decisions about what they're going to eat starts in the grocery store. And that's where we become a very valuable resource because we can guide them and show them how to make those healthier choices. At Vital Bridges, I provide one-on-one -on -one counseling either in person or through telenutrition sessions. Along with that, we provide uh, food specifically for people who are living with HIV AIDS. Right now, I'm working in health IT. So as a dietitian, there's not that many of us working in this area. So my challenge right now is to be that trailblazer to make that path for us as nutrition professionals working in the health IT space. I've spent most of my career working with failure to thrive children and underserved populations. The greatest impact that I could have as a dietitian was to work with people who didn't have enough food, and to make sure that I increased awareness in all ways so that we made sure that people had enough food. With a career in dietetics, you are guaranteed to experience the reward of helping others and changing lives. Nutrition is the one area where we can intervene and actually change people's lives. How many jobs can you say that my job every day is to make people feel better, live longer, and to be happier? And we get to do that as dietitians, and that's why nutrition is so important. I've always just loved to help people and to share information. And if I can do that and help improve their lives, that's just the best thing. It's always exciting to see the fruits of the labor, so to speak, that what it is that they put into their body is translating to allowing them to run those skills, to hit those home runs, to throw somebody out at the plate. I find it very rewarding to be in the field because I can help people in the community make healthier choices and living a healthier life. The best part of any profession, and especially with dietetics, is getting to work with people. And since we're all about food, getting to work with people and food. <laughs> What's going to be better than that? The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is your source for everything you need to start your path towards a career in dietetics. To learn more, visit eatrightpro.org slash career. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slides. I hope you enjoyed that video. It gives a, a nice, it's always when things are visual, it helps us to, to see that. Okay. Um, I'll just have a look at the questions later. I'm going to finish off my, my last few slides uh, so that we can just, um, here we go. Okay. So I just wanted to end off on some of the future um, aspects of, uh, for career, which is uh, basically talking about also advanced degrees uh, that uh, later on after uh, completing the undergraduate degree, a graduate degree would then allow dietitians to then delve into a more specific area of interest more in depth and become more specialized. And this would give the opportunity for her for them to obtain higher level positions, uh, which would lead to more earnings as well. And graduate degrees can be not only in nutrition, but in related fields as well, such as public health nutrition 
And uh, if you were more interested in even pursuing a PhD for to work in academia or in research, that would be another uh, future option for you as well. So regarding the job outlook, uh, luckily we have a, still a quite a high demand for dietitians to provide care for patients uh, with various medical conditions and advise them on health. So uh, some of the um, labor statistics are being done that uh, there is growth that's being expected in employment opportunities, which is a faster growth rate than other occupations, the uh, 15%. So uh, definitely uh, we're gonna want, look out for those uh, statistics. And I'm sure that after this pandemic, we were all able to see the importance of healthy eating as well. Uh, our future trends include expanding our scope of practice and increased focus on disease prevention and integrative healthcare. So a more holistic approach to, uh, uh, to uh, medical nutrition therapy. Some of the emerging areas are nutrigenomics and nutrigenetics. It's basically the relationship of the interaction between genes and nutrients. And uh, also we're seeing more telehealth and telepractice or telenutrition uh, taking place where we can take our uh, patients online, visit, visit our patients online. We're seeing more behavioral counseling as we see that behavior plays such a large role in uh, in uh, eating habits, diet prescriptions, and uh, informatics, which is also the relationship between uh, uh, between technology, uh, information on the internet, and nutrition. So it kind of combines all that three. So it's going to be also using that data uh, that we get from the internet to advance uh, nutrition. So I wanna thank you uh, for listening to uh, my presentation here. And uh, if you are in, more interested in obtaining a degree in nutrition and dietetics, please feel free to visit our platforms, um, our website, which has our brochure with more information. And uh, you're more than welcome to contact us either on the number down here or on any of the social media platforms. I always like to uh, leave, end it with a quote, which is a very nice quote here, which is the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So uh, I'd like to take any questions that you have. Um, I did see a question in the chat that I can just have a look at right now to be able to answer. Um, so do all the positions need the license to practice uh, as dietitians? Okay, now, if you're only planning on, if you're only planning on practicing as a, a nutritionist, so this would be perhaps in organizations or, so if you're not planning on counseling patients for healthier, uh, a healthier lifestyle, then you may not need the licensure. This would limit though your job opportunities a lot. It's definitely much better to in incorporate your dietetics uh, component, which, which allows you to do the inter inter internship, a rigorous internship of around nine months in a hospital where you would be able to gain all the competencies that you need to practice in our profession. So it would open up a lot more job opportunity if you're going to um, uh, complete the licensure process, definitely. Okay, uh, thank you Mahara for your question. Uh, I believe that you're one of my students and thank you everyone for participating in the earlier poll. Uh, yes, Tenzil, uh, the link, did you mean, uh, your, the link, you mean the link to the video that I sent or can you just clarify to me which link? Um, if you have any question, you can just raise your hand and I can unmute you, or you can just leave your question in the chat box. Yes, Tanzil says he meant the video link. Oh, okay, perfect. I'll just put that right now in the chat box. Definitely, I can do that for you. And um, the U.S. Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics actually has a lot of great information on, on career and um, and you would be able to benefit. Okay, one second. So I'll be sharing the link right now.
Yeah, so uh, definitely um, the U.S. Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is a great place to go to to get more information on nutrition and on our career. Another great place is the Dietitians of Canada. I'm also biased uh, towards Canada on that. And then also uh, the British Dietetic Association has some information. So we do have these different regulatory bodies that, um, that oversee the nutrition profession. But I would say definitely the largest uh, trade association or body of nutritional professionals would be the U.S. Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. That's where I get a lot of my information from. Um, Tanzil has a question. He is asking how to be a healthy person, what strategies should be implemented? Yes, uh, how to become a healthy person. Wow, where do I start on that? That's going to be a tough one. Okay, well, um, when we speak about um, nutrition and adopting, um, we always focus more now on lifestyle changes, okay? So it's not diet alone. It's it's also, and this is why you're saying how you want to become a healthy person. That's why you didn't focus on the diet here, but becoming uh, healthier is changing our lifestyle habits. So when, I, when we talk about lifestyle is improving your diet, is improving your sleeping habits, is um, ma making sure you're managing your stress uh, because stress has a, a large role in also in um, weight management and in disease management, et cetera, in uh, maintaining physical activity. Um, I don't know if I've missed out on some other ones, but uh, definitely uh, we do have, we all have, we may all carry some genetic risk factors that lead to certain diseases. So this is why the only thing that we can modify is our lifestyle factors that affect disease. So we cannot control the genetic components. Like for example, if you have a family history of diabetes or of hypertension or high blood pressure. So you would have to then, try to modify your lifestyle factors. Um, so uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is one step. Now, how would you go about doing that? If you wanted to seek professional help, you can definitely visit licensed dietitians in the field that can help you on your journey. Um, you can also, you know, read uh, credible resources on, uh, on health and nutrition. Uh, of course, if you were a student that was interested in, enroll, in, enroll, in enrolling, uh, studying on nutrition also helps us to apply what we've learned in our own lives. So that's the beauty of, of studying nutrition as well, or even any, some of the other health uh, programs like public health. Uh, so definitely. Um, but uh, the, the idea of visiting a professional, they would then help you design a diet that would be customized to your own needs, because each person will have a different diet based on their gender, age, physical activity levels, uh, whether they're, you know, whether they're in a certain life stage, so they're pregnant or, or lactating. So definitely you have to then take a holistic approach towards reaching your goal, your healthy goals. There's a lot of apps that help as well in that. Thank you, Tanzil, for a very nice uh, question. And um, well, there's another question on uh, how, how it's going to be practicing nine months. So nine months at a hospital where you rotate in different uh, sub-disciplines. So for example, you would uh, uh, you would go on the cardiovascular uh, ward and you would learn how to provide nutrition education for cardiovascular patients, heart, heart disease patients. You would also be in the pediatrics unit and uh, maybe uh, help, uh, help uh, counsel patients and uh, their caregivers on uh, healthy uh, nutrition for that population. So what we do is we undergo different rotations in the clinical aspect. So pediatrics and maternal and child nutrition and cardiovascular and surgery and ICU and all of that. And we would also be involved in the food service rotations, which are within the kitchen usually, and we would be involved in community rotations, which are going to be usually uh, implementing community projects in the, in the community, such as uh, school projects or um, such as, uh, uh, long term care or anything like that. So, uh, this is why our uh, internship is a longer, longer internship. So it wouldn't be only one month in order to cover all of the competencies, in order to be able to practice uh, as a dietitian after that. 
So from Tanzil, also uh, our routine should be to uh, our first priority to stay healthy, definitely. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you so much for this uh, lovely comment. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, definitely it should be our priority because you're going to have a better quality of life if you take care of your uh, of nutrition and your life and uh, you will live longer and not only live longer you will live a better quality of life as you age so definitely something and when we're healthier we are more productive in our work we lead more productive lives where we're less absent uh, for work where we feel better uh, so definitely so many benefits that we can have by being healthy and taking care of our nutrition and having optimal nutrition um Tanzil has another question He's asking, can strategic games like chess or other games be interlinked for a healthy lifestyle? Uh, interesting. <laughs> well, I've never played chess, but if it's something that makes your mind work and it makes you think, there's been a lot of studies on uh, people with uh, Alzheimer's, that people who read and uh, make sure that they're using their mind, they're less likely to develop uh, Alzheimer's, but although etiology is still not known, but uh, definitely that's something we have to look into the research of things related to gaming and healthier lifestyle. Uh, perhaps it would stimulate your mind and uh, uh, maybe you know, help you with uh, producing any hormones or, uh, sorry, uh, uh, there, there, there could be a link, but this is sort of outside of the scope, uh, a little bit of our profession. Yes, uh, but anyways, I uh, definitely do hear that chess makes you work hard. And then I think I had one more question. What nutrition advice would you recommend to have a healthy skin? Uh, good question. Uh, vitamin C uh, and vitamin A, I think the best thing is to increase your intake of antioxidants, which are found in fruits and vegetables usually. So apples and oranges and uh, bananas, and these are what we call nutrient dense foods. So the, they have a high proportion of nutrients to calories. And when, you, when your intake of nutrients is that high, you're, you're making sure you're getting all your vitamins and minerals that you need in order to, uh, to um, be healthier. So uh, regarding uh, healthy skin is also affected by your sun exposure, by aging. I mean, during the aging process, of course, uh, you will you're bound to you know your as we age, our cells will uh, will uh, uh, will age as well, and so we're going to be affected eventually, uh, you know, by by those things. But definitely. Um, Regarding nutrition, I would say definitely a high intake of antioxidants, uh, such as vitamin C and vitamin E, and uh, also um, trying to think of other, other nutrients. Doesn't mean that other nutrients are also, oh, and also something very important, hydration. So uh, definitely uh, you would need to be very well hydrated in order to have healthier glowing skin as well. Any other questions? Perfect. So just remember when it comes to immunity, guys, it's really about a long-term approach for strengthening our immune system and, and having those nutrients that will strengthen our immune system over time. So making sure you're always following this, this healthy diet as much as you can in order to strengthen that immune system and fight, fight off disease. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my talk. Thank you for all the questions and lovely feedback. And you're more than welcome to uh, uh, send us an email. If you have any further questions, please feel free to do that. Um, uh, and I can also include my email in the chat if you have any additional questions as well. And I can forward it to the necessary, uh, if it's anything related to your to the admissions office or anything like that. Okay, so there's my email right here in case that you have any, uh, any questions. Thank you, Tanzil, for your comments. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice day.
Have a lovely uh, rest of your weekend, everyone. Rest Thank of your you weekend. Patrick. Thank you for the wonderful session. Thank you so much. So Harim, I think we're ready to um, end the session. Leave this end the session, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us. We will see you in the next session. Have a nice day. Bye bye.